Welcome to worship on this Sunday where we remember the baptism of our Lord Jesus and remember our own baptismal identity and calling. A few things as we start here that are important for our life together. Uh, annual meeting coming up, we've been telling you about that. That's next Sunday, the 24th at noon. We've been sending out lots of information uh, in the dub and in other emails, so everything you need to know uh, for the meeting is coming out in those, but if you still have questions, call the office and we'll make sure you get what you need. And if you're watching worship this morning, uh, still on Sunday morning, there's time to join in the budget forum. That's today, Sunday, January 17th at 11 a.m. We hope we'll see you there. Uh, and a report came out too. If you want a hard copy of that, let us know in the office and we'll make you one. And then this week we start back up with Bible study, starting into some new studies. So it's Thursdays at 1030 via Zoom and a, a great time to join us if you haven't before because we'll be starting and now, as we begin to worship, we begin with confession. We begin letting go with what weighs heavy on us. We begin letting go of those things that work deep inside of us that we don't even have words for. And we begin in hearing God's word of forgiveness and renewal. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources, and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, 
for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve men in all. Word of God, Word of Life. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. John the Baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to say to begin here. And I said this a number of months back, but I'm especially feeling it again. We miss you. We're grateful for any little interaction that we get when somebody comes by the office or those of you who were able to worship with outside on Christmas Eve. We love hearing from you or getting to have phone conversations. We're grateful for all those things. But they're not the same as worshiping all together. We're eager to do that again as soon as it is safe. And maybe I'm feeling this especially again now because when something has happened that has so shaken and threatened our nation, when we look ahead to this week with worry and tension, I want to be here with you all today being strengthened together as the body of Christ and in Christ. So we miss you. But being gathered as we can virtually, let's look at our gospel passage and what it has to say about who we are and our world. We're in Mark chapter 1 today, and we began in, in Mark back in Advent and talked about how the gospel writer Mark is short and concise, and what we see in today's seven-verse passage is the same thing. It's short, but it covers a lot. In the first four verses, Mark tells us about, the John, about John the Baptist, who he was, what he did, where he was, what he ate, what he wore. He gets that all in. Then, in the remaining just three verses, Mark tells us about the baptism of Jesus. It's a short account, but that doesn't mean that Mark thinks it's unimportant, just the opposite. The first thing that Mark tells us about Jesus. Jesus' life, or what Mark thinks we need to know about it, begins with baptism. What in your life began in baptism? 
Jesus' baptism, in the short account told by Mark, has some important details. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River by John, just as people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were being baptized. In other words, Mark's telling us that Jesus was baptized the same way and in the same place as everyone else. What does that say to you about our God? Something different did happen, though, following Jesus' baptism, something remarkable. Mark tells us that just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, the heavens were torn apart, and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove on him. Did you catch that description of the heavens? Mark says they were torn apart. Matthew and Luke tell us the same story of Jesus' baptism, but they use a different ver verb saying the heavens opened. Those are similar concepts, opened and torn apart, but not the same thing. And when I think of the difference between them, this is a, this is a silly, simple example, but I think of a bag of chips. And you know when you're trying really hard to open a bag of chips and you, you pull and you pull and then finally you pull and like the bag explodes open and chips go everywhere and it, it's like been ripped apart diagonally in this jagged way. Of course you have to eat all the chips then because there's no way they're going back in that bag. All to say, when something is opened, we get the sense it can be closed again. But when something is torn apart, that's not the case. What is torn apart rarely fits together again in the same way as before. And we know this concept of torn apart on a level much deeper than a bag of chips. Think of the ways we use that phrase. We might say about a tragedy, the community was torn apart. We might say about our own grief or regret, I was torn apart inside. Or we might use the phrase right now and say, part of the fabric of our country has been torn apart in a way that will not easily be put back together. Barriers were broken, lines forcibly crossed, violence took hold for many hours, and the resulting fear has not receded. An ugly form of entitlement reared its head, and bias was starkly revealed in the way we handle, in the way we handle dissent based on who raises it. What has been torn apart will not easily be put back together. It doesn't mean we don't try though and work hard at it. We must. We must do that as a country, try to put things back together and force justice and right wrongs that led us to where we are. But it won't be easy or simple. Because it's not just one tear, it's multiple tears. And the tears in our country are not separate from the torn places in our own lives, in our relationships, our perception of others, and our sense of self. So what do we do? Well, we gather here as best we can in this time as we are doing it now to worship, and we look to Jesus together. We look at our gospel passage today. Why do you think people from all over Judea and from the whole countryside were going out to the Jordan River? It wasn't just a thing people did for an afternoon walk. The Jordan River was a good 20, 30 miles from Jerusalem. So why were they going all that way? Well, maybe they were looking for something different. Maybe there was a lot that just wasn't coming together like it should. Maybe they were looking for something to believe in besides kingdoms and rulers around them who had disappointed again. John the Baptist offered them a chance to repent. And that might have sounded like a good place to start. So they went and they got started. And then one day, Jesus walked down to the Jordan River, entered the very same waters they had, and he came up offering something more than repentance. He came up offering forgiveness, dying to sin and rising to life. He came up offering life with him through the Spirit. He came up and walked out into the world and called others to follow him into life with him. Baptism into a life as a new beginning of redemption, of forgiveness, and mending together. Through a torn apart heavens, God came into a torn apart world for us. 
for putting pieces back together, for forgiveness, for life, one person, one beginning, one baptism at a time. Maybe we are looking for something different because there's just a lot that's not coming together like it should. A lot has been torn apart. So we enter the waters with Jesus. While we are there, we repent. We ask to be made clean. The Spirit descends on us. God's words, you are my beloved, whisper in our ears. We look beyond ourselves and see others. We see them seeking forgiveness too. We see the Spirit descend on them, whispering the same, you are my beloved. We come out of the waters. We feel what being sealed and forgiven and mended through the Holy Spirit can be. And we walk out into the world to offer that.
for police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, for the leaders of government, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, that God console all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us online for the first time or returning, and for all absent from our assembly this day, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, especially the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., that all their lives give us a vision of your beloved kingdom and the gospel in action. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things through the prophets who called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light shining in our darkness, revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, and his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless this meal that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, and your holy Church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you at this time to take out your communion kit, your communion elements, and hold up the bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. Do the same with the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. We pray, Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this table, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Hear these words of blessing. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, fill you and keep you in peace. Amen. Amen.
share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.